Hello everybody. Thank you for checking out today's video. If you're watching on Facebook, be sure to like the post. If you do, share it if you like it, and then be sure to follow the page also. And if you're watching with us on YouTube, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And wherever you can, leave me a comment because I love your feedback. So one exciting thing that has happened this week at Fully Known Ministries is my new book, The Unhealed Believer, What to Do When You've Done It All, is now available for pre-order to those who live in the US. Um, so if you live in the US and you wanna order this uh, paperback copy, then please go to our website at fullyknownministries.com. If you're an ebook person, that ebook will be available for download through our website on October 20th when the book goes out for distribution. And if you're overseas, it will be available to you through amazon.com. So. Now let's get to the best part. That's the, that's the meat here, right? And I'm gonna share something really exciting with you. The book is exciting to me, but do you know what really excites me is revelation. The, the possibility of revelation, the pursuit of revelation. It's like, the, it's like the chase, you know, it's the great chase. So God has been speaking something to me for the last several years, and um, I haven't been obedient to actively pursue that which he is telling me to pursue until recently. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this revelation with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you by the hand and we're going to walk together so that you can see what getting revelation looks like. Now, I've done uh, several teachings on receiving revelation and I would really encourage you to go to the website and check those teachings out. They're either in video form and if you don't like to watch videos, they're in, uh, in article form, um, but they are really gonna help you understand and walk through this with me. And some of you may need this revelation yourself, so come on with me, uh, learn from my example. And I don't know how long this is gonna take. I don't know if it's gonna take me a month or if it's gonna take me six months or a year or I don't know but what I do know is that this is what he's telling me I need to know and this is what I'm going to share with you so I'm going to I'm not I might not share it all some of it might just be for me um, but I am going to share with you little gold nuggets that are going to lead to the full treasure at the end okay so here's the revelation God has been telling me, he says, you know who you are in Christ, but you don't know who I am in you. Do you see the difference? You know who you are in Christ, but you don't know who I am in you. And I believe this revelation is, key, is the key to walking successfully in divine health it's the key to seeing signs, wonders, and miracles um, operating in your life, in your ministry, in your family, in your finances, in your body, uh, in your neighbors, in your community. I believe that this is this revelation of who he is in you is, uh, but I, I don't even have a word for it. Okay, so um, here's, so here's what I've done. And I just started this like two days ago and I already have something really awesome to share with you. So, okay, so the first thing I do are four keys to receiving revelation. First thing I do is remove distractions. Everything that I think, everything that I study, everything that I meditate on has to do with this question of who is he in me? I know who I am in him. I am a daughter of the most high God. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am unconditionally loved. I am healed. I am whole. I am prosperous. I am full of wisdom and knowledge. I know who I am in Christ. I am the beloved and the redeemed. I am a daughter of the most high God. But who is he in me? So this is what 
I'm focusing on, removing all of the distractions, setting my sights solely on this question of, God, who are you in me? Number two, I asked for revelation. According to James 1.5, I asked for wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, specific revelation of who he is in me. And now that I have asked, I don't ask anymore. I just give him thanks that he has given it to me because John, 1 John 5 verses 14 and 15 say, this is the confidence I have that if I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. And because I know he hears me, I know I will have what I requested of him. So I have asked for wisdom. I know he's already given it to me. It is already deep inside my spirit, man, just bursting to come out. So now it's my job to draw that out. So second is asking for revelation. Third is praying in the spirit with this specific thing in mind. And guys, it's not as easy as it sounds. So I spend 30 minutes, the first part of my day, I spend specifically praying in the spirit with this thought in mind, God, who are you in me? Who are you? And it's hard to, to rein in those thoughts, you know, just this morning, first of all, have a little notepad and a pen there because sometimes you get important things that you need to remember. So just write them down so you can forget about them. So, um, so just this morning I'm thinking, okay, I have to order books now because the book is ready. Now I have to, I have to do this and you have to purpose to focus on that one thing while you're praying in your, in your, in the spirit because your mind can get distracted with other things. So purposing to focus. And when you get off track, rein it back in, bring it back in. No, this is what I am thinking on right now, praying in the spirit. And the fourth thing is keeping the word in the forefront of your mind. So in this case here, that means continuing to think about what I hear him say to me. I continue to think about his word to me that says, I need to know who he is. Um, and after I share uh, this little nugget with you, that, that word has become the word that he showed me. And now this is what I'm gonna be running over and over my head is over the next week or two weeks or whatever it is until he tells me it's time to move on, that I've gotten everything that he wants me to get. I will, I will think on these things, okay? And as long as the word is at the center of everything, everything that God ever says to you will always line up with his word. So keeping the word in the forefront of your mind is going to keep you on course. It's gonna keep you from getting into false doctrine. It's gonna keep you from getting led down wrong paths, okay? So started applying those four things. And the first thing I hear is I want you to look at all of the miracles that I've performed in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Now, when I say I heard him say this, it's because I have, I have practiced hearing his voice. I am experienced hearing his voice. Uh, in the beginning, when I would hear things, I'd be like, God, is that you? Are you telling me to do this? But what I know right now is what you need to step out in faith and be obedient to. If you have a desire to do something and you are actively pursuing, if you are seeking him first, then you can trust that that desire is, is there from him. So I heard him tell me in, in prayer while I'm praying in the spirit that I need to look at the miracles. So I started in the Old Testament because I, I frequently read the New Testament, so I'm very familiar with those. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go back to the very beginning. So I went on blueletterbible.org and I did a search for miracles of the Old Testament. And they gave me a list from the first one to the last one with scripture references. It's an amazing tool, got, tools guy, tool guys, blue, slow down, blue letter by, I get excited blueletterbible.org, okay? And in the search, I did miracles of the Old Testament. So that brought me back to Exodus. And the first one that was listed was in Exodus 7. I think 
all of the first four are in Exodus 7. Um, but the first one was Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod, when he threw it down, turned into a snake, okay? The second one was, um, I'm forgetting now, dang it. Exodus 7, Let's, I'm just gonna turn there real quick. Let me just peek. I could really use your help right now, Holy Spirit. So this isn't even the main point. Now I just wanna know. Um, and then waters. Anyway, okay, so the rod, then, oh yeah, it was. It was the waters were turned to blood and then there were frogs and then there, the dust turned to lice and, and all these things. And there's so many good little um, nuggets in there. For example, the first two, when um, Aaron's rod, God told Aaron to throw his rod down. Then he told Aaron to hit the, the water and the water turned to blood. Little things like God gave a commandment, they heard God and then they obeyed, so they saw the miracle, right? Um, just little things like that. So I got through like the first four miracles and then um, I, I went for a run. And while I'm running, this thought comes to me. Okay, it says the first miracle was Aaron's rod turning into a snake. And I thought, that's not the first miracle. The first miracle is Genesis 1 verse one, where God created the heaven and the earth. In Genesis one, where he separated the heavens from the earth, where he separated the land from the sea, where he created, he, he spoke the world into existence. He created the, the plants and the animals. He created man and woman. Those were the first miracles. He is the originator of miracles. God is the originator of miracles. You know, and he didn't create something from nothing. God saw in the spirit realm what he wanted to create. He saw the world. He saw the people. He saw me. He saw you. And then he spoke what he saw into existence because when he spoke, the Holy Spirit went to work. The Holy Spirit did the work. God imagined it, he saw it, he spoke it, and then it came to pass, it became a reality. He is the creator of the universe. He is the originator of all miracles. He is the source of all miracles that follow in the Old Testament and in the New and that happen in this present day and age. He is the miracle worker. This is a good, this is a great lesson for us. This is the God kind of faith, that kind of faith that calls things that are not as though they were, right? This is what we need to be doing. This is what you need to be doing to see change, to see transformation. You need to see in the spirit realm. You need to see, you need to imagine, you need to have a positive expectation. The New Testament calls this hope. You need to see and imagine what it is you're believing for. And when you can truly see it, and let me, let me say this, when you're seeing these things, you're not trying to make something happen. You're not trying to create something. What you're doing is you're seeing into the spirit realm because your healing, your prosperity, your freedom, all of these things, every miracle that is available to be performed through your hands is already there and very present in the spirit realm. But it takes seeing it. It takes believing it. It takes speaking it. God saw it, he spoke it, it came into existence. We see it, we speak it, and then our faith puts the Holy Spirit to work and brings those things that we see into existence. Hallelujah. Man, I'm getting fired up here. <laughs> okay, so, 
you're thinking, oh, well, I have to think. How does this relate to my goal? How does what God showed me that he is the originator of miracles, he is the miracle maker, past, present, and in the future, how does that pertain to who he is in me? God spoke, right? And it happened. The power is in his word. He says in uh, Psalm 138 too, that he exalts his word above his very name. Why? Because the power is in his name. Hebrews 1 verse 3 says that he now upholds the universe by the words of his power. His word is power. His power is words. How does this relate? John chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning was the word, was the power. And the word was with God and the word was God. And then you see down in verse 14 of chapter 1 that the word, the power, became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the power. And we know that when we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, according to Galatians 4 verse 6, that God sent the spirit of Jesus inside our hearts. And 1 Corinthians 6.17 says that our spirits became one. That power, that miracle working power, that uh, earth creating, earth shaking, uh, mountain moving power is now in us, in the person of Jesus. And when we begin to see that, And when we begin to speak it out, when our thoughts, our words, and our actions line up with what we know, the Holy Spirit can get to work. And you'll start to see it working in your life. But we can't just mentally assent to this. We can't just say, yeah, I I know that, you know, God lives in me and I know that we're one and I know. No, that is not meditation. That is not thinking on it. It is not chewing chewing it like a cow chews its cud. You have to think about it. You have to think, what does this mean? What does this mean for my life? Think about it. Don't just say, yep, okay, yeah, I understand that. I can move on. Guys, I don't know how long I'm going to sit on this. I don't know if it's going to be a month or a year or two years that I sit on this one point. That the miracle, the original miracle maker, creator of the universe lives on the inside of me and what that means and what that looks like. So for however long it takes, that is my focus when I spend my 30 minutes every morning focused on this one thing. This is what I will focus on until I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I have gotten everything that I'm supposed to get and he shows me where to go next. And I think this is where so many people miss getting their revelation is they give up. They think, not sure what to do with that. Not sure how to move on from this. Yeah, I I hear him, but I don't know what to do. Go watch the teachings on how to receive revelation. I go through it in detail, beginning to end, how to take that thing and turn it into revelation that you walk in in your everyday life. Hallelujah. So guys, I'm excited. I'm going to share little nuggets with you along the way. Um, And... I fully expect by the time I come out of this on the other side that you are going to see signs, wonders, and miracles operating in this ministry 
flowing from my hands, flowing from my lips, I have no doubt because I am gonna be like a bulldog with this thing. And when you are seeking revelation, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to latch on to it. You have to commit to it. You have to be disciplined about it and thinking about it and meditating about it every day. You don't give up. You don't give up until you get what you're supposed to get. That is the how-to of getting revelation. Amen. Okay. Gosh, sometimes it's just like, zip, that's all I got. <laughs> oh, I, I know that'll be a blessing for you today, guys. And if you will take it and you will act on it and you will apply it in your life, you're going to get just as fired up and as excited as I am because you're going to start to see things happening, start to see things changing Hallelujah. Guys, let me pray for you. Father God, I just thank you. I ask for a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you for all of those that are watching. I speak to the strongholds, the barriers, the hindrances, and I command them to come down. I thank you, Lord, that all those who watch, they have ears to hear you, Lord, because you are the one who knows their path. You are the one who has their answer. You are the one that has their solution, God. There is no one else. There is no other way. There is no other path but through you, with you, by you, and for you, Lord God. I just thank you for this. I thank you for all those watching. I thank you that they are blessed, that they are favored, and that they know how to walk in that blessing and favor, Lord God. We just thank you. We love you. We worship you. We honor you. I could just pray in the spirit right now, but I'm going to end. We believe it, Lord, and we receive it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Guys, I love you. Don't forget to go to fullyknownministries.com and pre-order that book, The Unhealed Believer, What to Do When You've Done It All. I know it'll bless you. I love you guys. Next time, I'm out. Mm -hmm.